Have you ever felt like communicating with a narcissist meant you needed to be on call 24-7 no matter what? Like you had to be able to answer the phone call, answer the text within seconds. And if you didn't, you'd get in trouble. With If you didn't, you'd get yelled at. If you didn't, you'd get the silent treatment. Like you always felt like you're always at like the beck and call of like them. Like, hey, like he needs you to respond instantly. Maybe you find yourself in this aspect of a never-ending communication cycle with the narcissist, with a toxic person, and you end up feeling just like emotionally drained and overwhelmed. Well, back in the day when I used to work for Chick-fil-A, I did a stint for about 10 years with Chick-fil-A, and I was a manager of one where I ended up being on call basically 24-7. So the store alarm would go off, I'd get a call, have to go into the store. Uh, there'd be an issue at the store, you know, I'd have to go in and be able to handle things. One time my wife and I, we were out grocery shopping, it was like seven o'clock at night, we were doing a couple of different things and got a phone call and had to go straight to the store. Went to the store and we ended up being there for a couple hours dealing with a personal issue. So my wife is there like heating up food because she's like, I'm still hungry. So like we're there dealing with things. When you deal with a narcissist, you get to a place where you're on call 24-7, where there's not really a, an on or an off, it's just you're always there supporting the other person. Did you have that? And was that something that you saw in your life? You might be able to connect with this with other jobs that you've had of other aspects, but when it comes down to it, want to explore how exhausting it is having to communicate with a narcissist 24-7 whenever they need you to, but making sure it's not their convenience, uh, that it's good for them. It doesn't really matter if it's good for you or not. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations and your guide in the Escape Toxicity Challenge. You can get it $7 at escapetoxicity.com. It's a great way just to be able to understand narcissistic abuse, to start to learn the formula that we teach to help break you free from that, to get you out of the trauma bond, to clear the rumination, to reduce the triggers, all those different things we try to focus on. Well, with this aspect of dealing with a narcissist and how much communication, how much communication did your narcissist have with you? Maybe they didn't have much communication at all, or maybe they expected a lot of communication from you, but they didn't give much communication back. Does that resonate? Was that what it looked like in your relationship? Well, the one aspect that I want to be able to focus on first is how the narcissist needs this attention. So like for me, I always needed attention from somebody no matter what it was. And I knew this early growing on, go, growing up, I just didn't know exactly what it was. So like for me growing up, it was like always having to have communication with someone, always having to have someone texting me, always having to have someone reaching out, someone interacting. And when they would do that, I would feel better about myself. When they do that, I would be even more focused. When they do that, I would, I would feel better about what was actually going on. Well, narcissists have this like need for attention of like, like I thrive on attention and validation from other people. Like that's the idea. That's the, the thought process. And this like need typically comes out in admiration, typically comes out in reassurance, uh, comes out into this like relentless demand of you need to communicate to me. Now, a lot of times in covert or vulnerable narcissists, you get where, hey, they text you, I love you. They text you all these nice things and you don't text them back instantly. It's game over. Like you're in trouble because you didn't actually communicate with them. You didn't actually try. You must not love them anymore. And all of a sudden they're playing the victim and you're like, I didn't even know that I wasn't doing something that I was supposed to do. Well, they keep you in this cycle of like relentless communication over and over and over. And typically what it looks like is you have to be available for the narcissist 24-7. So like, it didn't matter to me if the other person was at work or was at a, an event or you know had family or friends in town. Like If they weren't texting me, if they weren't responding when I texted them, that was an issue. You know That must have meant that she didn't care about me or that she doesn't love me or all these different pieces that I would throw back at the other person, have them come back, defend, and be like, no, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I love you so much, like all that kind of stuff to produce even more of this admiration, more of this like connection piece where they're getting bonded together. Okay. Do you see this? Is this something that happened in your life? If so, like leave a comment down below or like ask a question of like, okay, what about this scenario? What about this? The narcissist expects you to be available all times to cater to their emotional needs and to validate a fragile ego, to validate who they are, okay? So think of it this way. A narcissist might demand your attention day and night. 
expecting you to respond immediately to text messages, to calls. You know, you don't answer the text messages, they start calling. You don't answer the calls, they show up at your door. And they use this communication as a means to be able to keep you under control and to assure that their needs are met. That you're always focused on meeting their needs and disregarding your own. This is why the majority of the time when people come out of narcissist relationships, they're like, I don't even know how to take care of myself. I don't even know how to work on myself. I don't even know what self-care is because they've spent so much time investing and caring for the narcissist and putting it all on them, oftentimes because it's already been manipulated that way. Well, then you also have this aspect of emotional dependency along with the manipulation. This emotional dependency is a tool that narcissists use to manipulate, to control you in that connection piece. Think of it this way, by keeping you constantly engaged in conversation, they start to create this emotional dependence. So like like if I would communicate with someone and it would be a constant, there would just be this depth that would start to be there. Now it's kind of like a fake depth. It's kind of like a fake like vulnerability or fake emotional connection when there's not really a depth to the conversation or to the things that I'm actually bringing to the table. But there's this emotional piece back and forth of like when you start to communicate a lot with someone, things start to happen. You start to grow either together or farther apart. And by keeping another person engaged in conversation, this develops that emotional dependency. Like a narcissist relies on your presence, your responsiveness to maintain their sense of self-worth and validate their image. You're going to see this in multiple different ways. Now, you can see this in the positive light of you're always texting like these nice things. You're always coming back to them. You're always apologizing. You're always saying that you love them, all this kind of stuff. You could look at it in the nice way. Or you could look at the negative way where you're calling out the narcissist, where you're getting mad, where you're having reactive abuse, where all these different things are happening because of what the narcissist is doing, how the narcissist is like pushing your buttons. Okay? So a lot of times the narcissist will use this to keep this dependency. You're going to see this in the relationship with intermittent reinforcement, the highs and lows in the relationship, the ups and the downs, the like, I just don't think we're good to be together. Like, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. And you're like, no, but wait. And it produces this push pull. Okay. Now you're going to see a narcissist a lot of times have this like demand and have this like bombardment of like messages, calls, demands for attention, like making you feel obligated. Like that's the whole that's the whole name of the game is like narcissist wants to make you feel obligated. Once you're obligated, then they have control over you because you're obligated to respond. So like, sweet, let me get my daily deposit of admiration juice and they text you and then you have to text them back. Like there's not an option that you weren't able to do that. Like you're at work, okay? Like obviously you care more about work than me. Like you, like literally it'll go on any different level. Name anything that you're doing that is you're busy and it won't matter to the narcissist. I was at work. No, you're probably cheating on me. You know, I was out with friends. Like, no, you were probably sleeping with someone else. Like, there's always like, there's always something else, okay? But typically what will happen is narcissists will start to guilt trip you if you don't prioritize their communication, okay? This is all about establishing control and dominance over you. Like, I can't believe you didn't prioritize me. Like, that's the thought process because I'm the center of the universe. Why didn't you prioritize me? Therefore, everything else you care about more than you care about me. You're like, no, I do care about you. And it's just another way to pull you back and manipulate you even more. Okay, so you need to be able to understand in going through this process, you have to start taking a stand and actually setting boundaries and reclaiming some of your time. This is going to be one of the most difficult things for some of you. Okay, if you're like, hey, just off the gate, I struggle with the boundaries and I struggle with reclaiming time when it comes to texting, calling, communicating with my narcissist, leave a comment below. Because this is one piece that is pivotal in you actually breaking free. In order to break free from this communication trap, you have to establish clear boundaries. Now, these boundaries aren't you putting rules and regulations on the narcissist, on the toxic person. They're for you saying, hey, this is what I'm willing to accept. This is what I'm willing to respond to. This is what I'm willing to do. Oftentimes, it's a subtle and a small shift that you need to make. Sometimes it's just taking your phone and putting it on do not disturb. It's just taking your phone and putting it so the messages that come through are, you know, on silent. And then you get to a place where you start to check your phone at a certain time during the day. You check for certain messages and you can respond during that time. But it's starting to put a buffer. Okay, that's the whole goal when we start to work with people and help them heal is we need to start putting in buffers. It could mean that like when you get a text from this person, you set a timer of two minutes before you even respond then five minutes, then 20, like you slowly build up to a place where you're actually limiting the communication that you're having with that toxic person because you know it's not helping you grow, change, heal, and develop. So you have the right to set limits. 
the other person is going to make you feel like it is not your right, that you that they're entitled to you and you're being abusive by limiting your communication. But at the end of the day, the communication that you have right now with a toxic person, is it working for you or is it not working? Like, is it helping you grow or is it hindering your growth? Like, is it moving you forward or is it actually pulling you back? Because at the end of the day, the only thing we can focus on is you. And that's learning how to set healthy boundaries, how to set limits of what you're actually communicating, how you're actually doing this to reclaim your time, to reclaim and pull you away from some of those triggers so you can actually focus on the next thing. So you can actually focus on your healing. But you have to communicate your boundaries consistently of this is what's happening, this is what I'm doing, and be prepared to enforce whatever consequences if those boundaries are violated. Otherwise, boundaries won't mean anything and narcissists will just keep going over them over and over and over again. Like if you're at the place where you're wondering like, hey, how do I actually start to heal from this? How do I actually start to deal with this? I want to invite you to go to escapetoxicity.com and click the link in any of our bios because I want you to understand what narcissism is how reactive abuse shows up, how to deal with the guilt and the shame, how to start learning the formula of teaching you of going through and breaking the trauma bond, the rumination, the intrusive thoughts, all those things are built inside there. You get it for $7, you get invi invited into a community that's going through the same exact challenge. You can post your homework, interact with different people that are doing the same exact thing and they're not in the same exact place. So check it out. If you haven't had a chance, like, follow, subscribe. Please help by sharing some of these messages just so that other people understand more about it so that you could be the beacon of light for someone else and help someone else get out of a toxic relationship. If you want to work with me in a one-on-one -on -one environment, more of an accelerated environment, you can go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-ones. We'd love to help and partner with you in your healing process today.